So we just saw that monopolies have a deadweight loss in the market. So what can we do about it? Well, if you're the government of a country, can you try to lower the deadweight loss, maybe even get rid of it? Well, there's one way you can get rid of the deadweight loss and that's called MC pricing. What it is, is it's a price ceiling. Basically, force the monopoly to set the same price that perfect competition would, and then they'll go up to that quantity, and there won't be any deadweight loss anymore. Let's see how it would work. Let's say this is the graph of a regular monopoly. So we know that where they're, they're going to produce where the MR, so you actually have to go out of your way to create the MR curve, see where the MR intersects MC. So when there's a lot of graphs, you just got to you know carefully look at which one's which. So MR equals MC at this quantity. And there, the price that they're going to charge uh, is up to the demand curve. So that's the price that the monopoly is going to charge. Here's the thing, right off the bat, let's first ask ourselves this. Is this monopoly profitable over here? Is it making a profit? Keep in mind, profit, the equation is, profit is quantity times P minus ATC. The P minus ATC is essentially your per unit profit. You're charging your customers a price of P and it's uh, ATC is the cost on average. And that's your per unit profit times the quantity gives you your overall profit. So now what we have is your price is this much, but on average, that's where we look at the blue curve. At that quantity that you're selling, this is the average cost of production. So this gap is your per unit profit times the quantity. This is your overall profits if you are a monopoly. So here's the thing. If you wanted to regulate them, let's say you force them to set this low price instead of this price over here. They have to lower it. Here's the thing. The only reason they made this scarce quantity was to be able to charge this high price. So if you're forcing them to charge this low price, they're thinking, I might as well make one more item because if I make one more, my marginal co uh, cost, notice that the red curve has a lower Y value than this price. So that means it costs them less than this value to make the item. So they might as well make it and earn that, all that extra profit. So that's why you know, the only benefit of having that low quantity was to have that high price. So if they're going to be forced to have a low price anyways, they're going to want to make the same quantity that perfect competition would and, and make this much, you know, producer surplus. But here's the question. What is the profits over here? If you were to regulate it, we know that the deadweight loss now over to here, when you regulate them with MC pricing, will go to zero. Zero deadweight loss because you're at the same quantity that perfect competition is. The profits, P minus ATC, let's see, this is the price. And at that quantity, the blue curve still has a lower Y value than the price. So the average cost is still less than the price. So you're still making a positive profit. You know, it's, it's a lower profit than it was when you were maximizing it, but it's still there. So no problem there. Now let's talk about what's called a natural monopoly. It's basically a firm with a lot of fixed costs. And what happens as we'll see is that MC pricing actually doesn't work with that. So imagine you're the only airport in town and you know, you're a monopoly. Most of your costs are fixed costs. You know, the cost of setting up shop, of getting the plane, of hiring a pilot, making sure everything's functioning correctly. So what's your marginal cost? Well, it's not that much, right? It's peanuts. Literally, a bag of peanuts is your cost of having one more passenger on a flight. So here's the problem with MC pricing. If you were forced to charge P equals MC, which is what perfect competition does, you would literally have to charge everyone like, a dollar per flight if that's what your marginal cost is, but then you're gonna make a loss. So let's look at a graph. Let's see what happens in that case. Let's say this is the graph for a natural monopoly. If there's no regulations, what they'll do is they'll make the MR curve. They'll find where MR equals MC. Let's say the MC is one. It costs you a dollar to make, you know, one more unit. Well, the price we're gonna charge is up here. So let's say that's $300 a flight. And let's say your average cost is $200 a flight. So you're making a profit, no problem. But let's say somebody had did MC pricing, so now you're over here. You're forced to make this quantity at a price of one, and now your average cost per person's way higher than a dollar, so you're making a loss. So that's why MC pricing on a natural monopoly will actually make them make a loss. And sure, there will be zero deadweight loss here temporarily, but then they're going to shut down in the long run when there's, you know, uh, because they're making a loss. And so that's why there's a compromise. Because here's the thing, you're kind of split. Do If you're the government, you're thinking on the one hand, do I do nothing, leave it unregulated? And in that case, we know that there's, you know, they're going to make a profit. But notice, there's all this deadweight loss in that case. 
So that's one option. On the other hand, you could do MC pricing, have no deadweight loss, but then they're probably going to eventually shut down because they're making a loss. So the compromise is what's called ATC pricing. And that's where you force them to produce, not where MC and demand intersect, but where ATC and demand intersect. So you're forcing them to produce this quantity at this price. So here's the benefit of it. The deadweight loss, instead of being all this if you were to do nothing, the deadweight loss is only this much because that's how far off you are from perfect competition. Not only that, but the firm won't want to shut down because they're not making a loss. They're not making a profit either though because here, the price that they're charging, that's the same Y value as you know the blue, the blue curve over there, which is their average cost. So on average, if that's 150, it's like they're charging 150 a flight and it costs them on average 150 a flight. So they're making a profit of zero. And that always happens with ATC pricing and there'll be some data rate loss, but it's better than doing nothing.